Trigonometric substitution is the next integration technique we're looking at. It's going to get a, take a bit of time to get started. We're going to look at some background before we actually start integrating. But you'll see shortly why we do this. There's some trig identities you need to know. We've seen them in previous videos. I'm assuming you know them. So these are the kind of integrals we're going to look at. Not as simple as these. They can be this simple. They can get a little bit more complicated. But currently the tools we have do not allow us to integrate integrals of these, this format. So we're going to develop a system called trigonometric substitution. It is a form of inverse substitution, meaning we make something more complicated in order to make it simpler. So let me show you. Let's just look. We're not integrating out all. We're just looking at this whole concept of trigonometric substitution. If I've got the root of a squared minus x squared, if I say let x, so instead of x, I have something bigger. Let x be equal to a sine theta. If I substitute that in there, and we're going to put a restriction on theta shortly, but we're not looking at it now. We're first going to see why we need that. If I substitute a sine theta into there, that's the same as the square root of a squared minus a squared sine squared theta. So hopefully you can see, well, we can take a squared out and we've got 1 minus sine squared theta. And I know 1 minus sine squared theta is just cos squared theta. So all of a sudden, this root is looking a little bit simpler because that'll be the absolute value of a times the absolute value of cos theta. Now, we would much rather integrate cos theta than the root of a squared minus x squared. So that's why we're doing what's called trig substitution. So we're substituting in something bigger. It simplifies into something much more simpler, and it's a standard integral we can solve. But now, let's look at this cos of theta. I want cos of theta to be positive. And conveniently, if I say theta is between minus pi over 2 and pi over 2, we're hitting two places. What we get then is that cos theta is going to be positive. But what we also know then is then that arc sine or the inverse sine function exists if theta is defined in that interval. Because in this case, x over a is then sine theta, which means theta is arc sine or inverse sine, whichever you prefer. I'm going to switch between the two of x over a. So that makes it nice, and you'll see why we'll need that once we look at actual examples. So we limit the interval of theta so that my inverse function exists and that cos theta is positive. So now if I had to integrate this root, it's much easier to make the substitution and then integrate simply cos of theta. All right, that's the first one. Let's look at the next one, a squared plus x squared. We're going to follow the same trend. I'm going to say let x, rather than this x here, I'm going to make it something bigger. More complicated, but it'll simplify things later. A tan theta. And I'm going to limit theta. We now know we've got a purpose of limiting theta between minus pi over 2 and pi over 2. The first reason is so that the arctan function can exist. The next reason will come out shortly. So that's the root of a squared plus a squared tan squared theta which is the square root of a squared times 1 plus tan squared theta, which you know is sec squared theta. So that's the root of a squared times sec squared theta. So that gives me the absolute value of a times the absolute value of sec theta. And sec theta is positive in that interval. So that's the absolute value of a times sec theta. All right, so that's the second one we're going to use. The third one is not going to let us off so easily, but I'll show you. We've got x squared minus a squared. So if I've got something of this format, I'm going to say let x be equal to a sec theta. I'm going to limit theta between 0 and pi over 2. And then from pi over 2 to pi we know sec is not defined at pi over 2. All right. Now, this is going to help sec inverse exist, but it's not going to help me with the next part. You'll see shortly. So that is a squared sec squared theta minus a squared 
We can again take a squared out as a common factor, and I've got 6 squared theta minus 1. So that gives me a squared times tan squared theta, which is the absolute value of a times the absolute value of tan of theta. Now, unlike our previous two examples, in this case, tan of theta is not necessarily positive in this interval. There's two options. If theta is between 0 and 2 pi in the first quadrant, then tan will be positive. But if theta lands in the second quadrant, then tan is negative. So we will do an example like this. So just keep in mind, this one is not so straightforward, but we will deal with it when we get to this example. Right, so these, we have not done any integration, but this is just the background so that we don't get caught up in, in with what we're doing once we're actually using these techniques in integration. So to summarize, we're looking at the format. Now, the integrals won't always just be this simple, but this is where we start, and we'll see where we use them and how they simplify our integration with trig substitution. So we've got the general format, the substitution we make, the limits on theta, and then the identity we're going to use. So if you've got this handy, it'll make your trig substitution much easier. So in the next video, we're going to start looking at examples of using these techniques for trig substitution to simplify integrals.